Hey friends, welcome back to the Godspeed Garage. In this episode, I'm gonna show you how to remove torsion bars and CV joints from the front end of a S10 or a Blazer. So as you may know, this S10 chassis is going underneath my 29 Dodge. And since the S10 was four wheel drive, I have to remove this front transaxle and the torsion bars. And so I went to good old YouTube University trying to find out how to remove these torsion bars and how to remove these front axles. And there weren't a lot of videos out there. So I figured I'd take this chance to make a video about it. So hopefully this will help someone who's in the same predicament that I'm in. Now, S10s are actually really cool little pickup trucks. They make V8 swap kits for these things, and you can really turn these things into a sweet little hot rod. In fact, if this S10 pickup was an extended cab, I probably would have kept it. It's a cheap and easy way to get into hot rodding because you can find S10s or even the GMC Jimmys or Blazers or S15s or whatever pretty cheap. I'm talking like less than a thousand dollars and that's a super easy way to get into a vehicle that's pretty easy to modify. In fact a lot of guys will get an S10 and use the chassis as a good platform for a body swap. So thanks for Chevy being hot rodder friendly. So in order to remove these torsion bars you have to first remove these torsion bar keys and in order to do that you have to use a torsion bar unloading tool. I rented this one from my local AutoZone. They have a free tool rental program. You'll set the bar on top of the cross member and then the C-clamp part of it has a little nipple that goes in these holes on the bar. And then on the bottom side, the screw goes up into the dimple on the torsion bar key. It doesn't take much force to get these torsion bar keys to move. So I just used a one inch wrench. You can use an impact if you want, but it doesn't take much. Once you got these keeper bars loose, you can loosen the bolt. Now, just as a side note, if you're planning on reinstalling these torsion bars or installing new ones, you're gonna wanna use a wrench or a ratchet so you can count the turns as you remove this screw. So that way you can put it back to pretty close to where it was. Once you got the bolt out, you can remove this keeper bar and then release the tension on the torsion bar key. Once you got all the tension off of the unloader tool, you can remove it and then you have to push the torsion bar forward towards the front of the car to get the key to drop down. You can use a hammer and a punch. I used my air hammer with a punch bit on it. Once you got your torsion bar key out, then you'll need to remove this cross member. And then once you got the cross member out of the way, you can wiggle the torsion bars out of the front lower A arc. Okay, so now that you got your tire off, here's the game plan. We have to remove this cotter pin and this cover and this is actually a 36 millimeter socket which i went out and bought from my local auto parts store Now we're gonna remove this upper ball joint and in order to do that, we have to remove this king nut. But first we gotta take off this cotter pin. This castle nut is a 22 millimeter. A 7 8 wrench will work as well if you don't have a 22 millimeter. Now you don't wanna remove the nut all the way. You wanna leave a couple of threads so when this releases from the ball joint, it doesn't come crashing all the way down. Before I do that, I'm gonna remove this lower shock mount. And that's an 18 millimeter nut and bolt. By removing this lower shock mount before I drop this off the ball joint, just makes it easier for access. Yep, that shock is completely dead. When you hammer on this, you wanna hammer on the cast iron part of the spindle. You don't wanna hammer on the A-arm or the ball joint. You wanna hammer right here. I'm 
Might need a bigger hammer. It's been on there for 30 years. There it goes. There it goes. We're loose now, so I can take this king nut off now. Should be able to drop all the way out of there. There we go. Now to remove the CV joint from the transaxle, you can see there's six bolts that you'll need to remove. Okay, so here's the thing you can see what's going on here I've got this hammered up as far as I can go out of the spindle and trying to wiggle it out I need like another inch and look at the brake line here is pulled tight the rubber boots actually torn on it but not to worry I'm gonna replace those for this project anyway so you do have to remove the caliper to get this to swing away just that extra little inch to get this thing off of here so after spending about 20 or 30 minutes trying to wrestle that last half inch of the threads out of the spindle and cursing and throwing tools, I finally decided just to go the easier route, I guess, and remove the bottom ball joint to get the spindle completely out of the way. Thankfully, I didn't have to remove the tie arm or the sway bar. Once I removed the castle nut and got the spindle free from that bottom ball joint, it came off and I was able to swing it out of the way pretty easily. So now that CV joint should come out of there pretty easily. Alright, well there you have it. How to remove the CV joint. So for the installation, just watch this video in reverse. Anyway, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe, give it a like if this helped you out, share with your friends, comment, etc. See you next time. These last few years have been the